You can see how they cluster, and this is just wow. one big, huge marijuana bud. Just a few years ago, Tony Fox would have been considered the kingpin of a major marijuana trafficking operation. And her 3,000 cannabis plants could have brought felony charges and serious prison time. But today, Fox is the CEO of 3D Cannabis Center in Denver, a legal, licensed, multi-million dollar marijuana business. It's all about changing perception. That's the key. It's, it's always been my goal is to change the face of the cannabis user and say, I use cannabis, I'm a mom, I'm a businesswoman, I'm a high-functioning member of society, and it makes me a better person. Insiders are calling this former black market the cannabis business, and Fox's cannabis business is booming. In the first three months of 2014, we generated over $1.2 million in sales in three months. And in January and February, we were only open three days a week. So the, the potential is limitless. And piggybacking on all that pot profit potential. Getting out of the bus and there's a big cloud of smoke that comes out. Is the nation's first marijuana tourism company. Well, you would think in, a t in like a pot tour, you'd get a bunch of potheads that would come to a tour. But the thing is, it, it, what we've really discovered, it's typically people over the age of 40 that are looking for or something different. JJ Walker is the CEO of My 420 Tours, one of countless ancillary cannabis businesses that are providing a major boost to Colorado's tourism industry and the state economy. It's so exciting that people you deal with every day are just so passionate about it and there's just new and there's new opportunities everywhere to be found. I mean, these are going to appeal to boys and girls. Not so Very fast, appealing. says Bob Doyle with the organization Smart Approaches to Marijuana. Doyle warns that eager entrepreneurs getting into the marijuana market now will be smoked out by big business sooner than later. There's big business behind this. People shouldn't be fooled. Doyle fears that the success of big business will overshadow what he calls the long-term effects of legalized pot, decreased worker productivity, exposure to children, and health risks associated with heavy use of the drug although he does recognize there may be some medicinal benefits to marijuana. Let's get this more patient focused and not profit focused. My hope is Alaska does not make the same mistakes that we've made and that they put public health and safety first. There's no book that's been written on how to legalize marijuana. So what we've done is we're ever practical. We're borrowing from best practices and other regulated environments like liquor or casino gambling. Colorado's marijuana model, according to Lewis Kosky, was crafted with public health and safety in mind. It requires proof of age 21 and up before purchase, strict inventory tracking, random and undercover compliance checks, and childproof packaging, among other things. It's important that we're always position ourselves to where we can implement the new statutes or regulations in a really thoughtful and predictable and controlled way uh, so that we can ensure that we're ensuring public safety here in the state of Colorado. Colorado's law also stipulates that a portion of the expected near $100 million in taxes in the next fiscal year will go toward youth marijuana use prevention programs. But that's only one leaf off of Colorado's growing Mary Jane money tree. There's no question the cannabis business is raking in tons of green here for the state of Colorado. But how that money is being put to use, well, that's still up in the air. Meanwhile, Washington expects to reap in tens of millions of dollars in marijuana tax revenues this year alone that the government here is in no hurry to begin collecting. We're the pioneers of this effort and we're making sure that we do it right because the federal government is requiring that of us. If they, uh, if other states are interested in doing this, they're Washington, watching Washington State very closely as they are Colorado. Brian Smith with the Washington State Liquor Control Board says if either state makes a wrong move, they could ruin the chance for any other state to follow in their footsteps. Charlotte Green, KTVA 11 News in Denver and Seattle. And you're going to smell like pot when they're done. I believe it. Yeah, I don't know how I could avoid it. Not too long ago, a friend of Bob Leeds came to him with an idea. I never thought that I'd be doing this in my retirement. Planting an entrepreneurial seed. Fast forward just 18 months. And it's grown from that small interest into... Into 5,000 plants. So literally a sea of green farms. It is a sea of green farms. 75-year-old Leeds is the co-owner of Sea of Green Farms in Seattle, one of only a handful of licensed marijuana growers in Washington, a fortunate few who stand to make millions cashing in on what marijuana market insiders are calling our nation's next cash crop. 
there's only 10 have been licensed so far. And I think it's because we were just really, really prepared. Had nothing to do with luck. Preparation. Well, it had some to do with luck, but it was preparation. We And we took a gamble. A gamble in which he wagered a $700,000 investment and his freedom. Lead says the way Washington's cultivation licensing process is set up, an applicant has to literally break the law in order to get approved. We went ahead and started putting the grow together even before we got our license. We had to have all that in place. And once we had all that in place, it was really easy to walk through the licensing process. And now Leeds is ready for that huge gamble to begin paying off, but he'll have to wait a little longer because Washington State hasn't granted a single reefer retail license. Once they license the sit dispensaries, then we'll have somebody to sell to. Are you getting anxious? I mean, it looks like these plants are reaching maturity. In two weeks, we'll have product to sell and no one to sell to. Probably not until the 1st of July. That's because Washington State has taken the time to make sure their weed retail rollout is done right, according to Brian Smith with the Washington Liquor Control Board. Smith says Washington and Colorado are drafting the blueprint on how Alaska and other states may implement recreational weed sales if voters decide to legalize. He says with the entire world watching, one wrong move could ruin the opportunity for every other state. And there's a very um, uh, in-depth investigation process that we're required to go through as we look at each of the applicants. We look at their financial history, we look at their criminal history, we look at where their location is in proximity to schools and places grounds and those types of things. And because so many are interested in getting in front of what many are calling the green rush, Smith says the Liquor Control Board has been in the weeds, so to speak, for months. We had over 7,000 people apply for a license. That's huge. That's, that's twice or three times as many as we even have grocery stores in Washington State. Of those 7,000 hopefuls that invested the time and money needed to pass the investigation, less than 5% will be receiving any return on investment. That's because the state is only granting 334 retail licenses statewide. Those will be chosen at random on July 1st. But in spite of those odds, entrepreneurs are appearing from all walks of life. Do you see all these people in the cannabis industry like working their butts off? We all use cannabis on a regular basis and we get stuff done. Licensed psychologist Allison Drazen has been counseling youth for more than a decade in Washington state. Four years ago, Drazen decided to expand her role as a health provider and began baking THC-infused medical marijuana edibles. And I actually use what I've learned here to educate parents about talking to their kids about drugs. So, and then I have this edible company where it's become really, really popular and um, we've won accolades. Dreesen's company, Adaluz Medibles, is one of many niches in the ever-expanding cannabis business market. Beyond the budding flower that is traditionally smoked, there are THC patches and pills, hash oil for vaporizing. Even food and drink is being infused with cannabis. My motto is a spoonful of sugar. Uh, it's better than a spoonful of sugar, you know, because it helps the medicine go down. Adaluz Medibles landed on on High Times Cannabis Cup's list of best edibles in 2012 and 2013. Demand is skyrocketing and there is tons of green to be made off of Drazen's can of butter blondie brownies, but like many others that have been at the root of the weed legalization movement. I would rather give my products away for free and feel like I'm doing something. What they've been calling a labor of love for years now has them poised for prosperity with their early start in Washington State's marijuana marketplace. Charlo Green, KTVA 11 News, Seattle.